Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone today to our Monday Thursday worship service. I'd especially like to welcome everyone who is watching us online. We know you're not watching us live because we're not currently streaming this, but we know that this is a very holy day and um, we are so glad that you were able to join us in this. Um, Mare, or Holy Thursday, um, is the beginning of what we call the great three days. Um, Made does not mean holy. It is actually a Latin word meaning commandment. And this is the day that we hear in scripture, Jesus giving us the commandment, that great commandment, which means to love one another. Um, I'm very grateful that the color for Holy Thursday, Made Thursday, can be either purple or scarlet, red. Now, um, 
I chose to wear a purple stole today. This one in particular because it was given to me by my daughter Heidi. Many of you might have remembered that um, when she was 15, she went to India with our synod. And this stole she picked up for me, um, it was made by the Dalit, which is the, in the case system, they are the untouchables. Um, those that um, are so unworthy that they're just forgotten. And the Lutheran Church, the Arcot Lutheran Church, has a ministry specifically um, to be a castless ministry. That means they, when they are together, they are not, um, it is not a priority, it is not, they are deliberately, intentionally castless which means the delete have the same status, the same rights, the same freedoms, the same worthiness as everyone else. And so they help support. And so this stole was made by the Dalit. Um, and I thought it was very appropriate on this Commandment Thursday, as we are commanded to love one another, um, that even those who we deem to be unworthy are certainly indeed worthy of the greatest of love. So, um, it's gonna be a little bit different. <clears throat> Normally, this is the day that we have Holy Communion, but with COVID practices, we are communing the first Sunday of every month. So, Easter, we will be having communion. Um, but, we are still reminded that the bread of life still walks with us, still, um, we remember and we celebrate this holy night in which he was betrayed. I'm very grateful that my family has joined me and more so that my husband has volunteered to share the gospel with us today. Um, I was not aware that he was willing to do this, but this morning he told me. He also knew that my hospice work has been very um, overwhelming this past week. Um, it, of all weeks to get surveyed, um, the state of the state has been coming in and doing evaluations for the hospice program. So everything has just been topsy turvy. I've been called in and questioned by the state to make sure that we're following protocols and all that. And as of this morning, I had not yet prepared what I was going to say to you all. It would have happened, <laughs> maybe on the spot, but it was just. Uh, knowing that that grace abounds and I'm just so grateful for his partnership and um, and this is what ministry is all about and so um, I'm anxious to, to hear what he has to say as well this service doesn't end it does not have a benediction it doesn't have a final song it, it intentionally is to be continued um, this is the day that at the end of service, we will actually say the Lord's Prayer, and then um, Psalm 88 will be read by me, and the altar will be stripped away, and it will be left barren, um, preparing us for Good Friday tomorrow. Um, it will end in silence, and you are encouraged to stay and ponder and pray for as long as you wish and return for the continuation of this service tomorrow at 7 o'clock as we have our tenebrae service of light and darkness um, at 7 o'clock tomorrow. With that, let us begin our worship. Please rise. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the Lord, within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God 
and with one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. <laughs>
first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 116. Let us read it responsibly. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ears to me whenever I call. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O truly, O Lord, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Lord Jesus. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. Came to Simon Peter, who said to him, 
Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he had put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in Him. If God has been glorified in Him, God will also glorify Him in Himself, and will glorify Him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for Me. And as I have said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. <clears throat> this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Now, in the spirit of passing the buck of preaching uh, this evening, I turned to Trace and said, You want to preach? <laughs> He said matter of factly, no. <laughs> it is an honor to be with you this evening and, and to share this time with you. April 1st is uh, a day in my family which uh, is, is not just about jokes and silliness. It is uh, my grandfather's birthday. He would have turned 95 this year. He passed away uh, just about six months or so before uh, uh, Nate was born. Wow. 17 years. I almost said it was Trace, but it, that's too soon. It had been longer than that. Wow, 17 years. Wow, it's been a long time. A lot of tremendous, great memories of my grandfather. In fact, uh, one of my last memories of Grandpa was one week prior to his passing, we had been home for a Thanksgiving break. We'd been living in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan at the time, serving our first churches uh, up there, and we had gone home for Thanksgiving uh, to spend time with both of our families, and on Thanksgiving Day, we were at my grandparents' house celebrating, and we gathered at the table. Now, I'm probably not very different than any of us. We all have that table in our households, that is the special table of gathering, right? The space where the families always gather around and celebrate the meals and do all sorts of other things that happen at tables. Uh, at our table in my grandparents' house, it's, my grandparents' have a house that was built like in 1920 or something. It's, it's one of those old, old houses in LaGrange, one of the western suburbs of Chicago. It's kind of a narrow room. It's a long, narrow table that uh, when a small family gathering uh, was happening at that table, there was at least 20 around it, and a kid's table out in the living room, when it was a small family gathering. And Grandpa was always at the end, his proper space, and Grandma at the other end, and all of us had our seats in between, and I was usually at the corner right next to my grandfather, we would usually have the meal spread out in front of us that Grandma had prepared for whatever the occasion was. And on that day, 17 years ago, it was Thanksgiving, and my grandfather 
more than likely said the very same thing he said every time we gathered for those kinds of meals. Ah, I see mother has prepared a small snack for tonight. <laughs> and you know what that means, it's a feast. <clears throat> more sides than you can count, a couple types of meats and buns, and you you're usually got your plates filled and you're busting at the belts and your grandma's sitting there going, did you get enough? <laughs> At the same time, she's saying, you know, you're starting to put a little weight on your <laughs> These memories, uh, I carry them and treasure them. Uh, I, I remember dearly uh, being at that table, uh, learning how to play double deck pinochle, which let me tell you, as a youngster, uh, Trace's age, uh, when I was first allowed to play pinochle on my own, having to figure out hold, how to hold 20 cards, at once it was very difficult. I'm so thankful that my wife's family is, plays euchre. It's only five cards <laughs> in your head once. If I could, when the day comes, have that table, I would have it in a heartbeat. Of course, my grandmother, who's now 94 years old, isn't going to die for another 50 years because of how stubborn she is. So it's going to be a while. But if I could have that table, I would have that table. I'd have the place settings. I really want the pitcher. It's this weird, strange color. It's not blue, it's not green, it's something weird in between that I don't know if it actually has a name, but it's this weird blue-ish, green-ish color, and it's what Grandma always served milk in at the table. Nothing else was ever served out of this pitcher, only milk. And milk only tastes good when it's poured out of this pitcher. I would have that little number thing that for some reason they always have sitting on the table. You know, one of those number scramblers that's got one through 15 in the four rows, and you gotta mix them up, and you gotta put them back in order, because inevitably you're sitting there bored as the adults are talking about topics that adults talk about as a kid, and you're sitting there fidgeting with it because there's nothing else to do because Grandma hasn't dismissed you from the table yet. <laughs> Dessert was coming, so you knew to wait patiently for the cake or the pie or the cookies, or usually all three, uh, served with ice cream because that's how Grandma served it. These memories around the table come flooding back whenever I think about my grandfather. They come flooding back whenever I think about how it's been over a year now since I've actually seen my grandmother in person. Our blessed pandemic. Thank you. Not been able to see my grandmother since a year prior to Christmas when uh, she would have been at my mom's house and we were at my mom's house for that holiday. His memories come flooding back because it's at those table moments in the family that you Remember who you are within the family. You have memories that are fun and lighthearted, like Grandpa telling the story of what money was his and what money was grandmother's. So this $5 bill is mine, and this $5 bill, and this one are your grandmother's. And you always move his on top of grandma's. Lighthearted, fun memories like that. You know, in some of my family, it brings back some painful memories. My sister doesn't always share the same fond memories because that joke about putting on a little bit too much always hit her just the wrong way. So for her, it's maybe not as quite memorable, but there's still a place that you know you have at that table. And no matter how many good memories or not so good memories, you know you're welcome at that table. No matter how much grandma loves you, and no matter how much grandmother says things that she thinks is loving, but maybe slightly hurtful, you're still welcome at that table. And you know there at the table, grandpa's gonna tell you some fond memory story that is meaningful to him that you've heard the last five times you're at the table with him, but he's gotta tell it again. Remember that you're a part of the family, that you belong. It's kind of coincidental that this day being my grandfather's birthday and all those flooding memories in my mind coincide with this 
Monday, Thursday, when we gather at a different table. Although, again, thank you, COVID, we don't get to tonight walk up and around and be at this table to receive the meal that we ordinarily would receive. There's something about being at this table. There's something about the memories of coming forward to this table, to stretching out that hand, to remembering the first time we came forward and reached out and the pastor handed us the wafer and the cup. Or maybe as a three-year-old, you snuck into your dad's communion kit and were eating the Jesus chips and the Jesus juice. Like, I had a three-year-old once do to me. <laughs> I remember dearly the table at my home congregation. It's a modern church building built in 1970, so it had this really wide open dais. The altar sat in the middle and it had a railing similar to this, except it went all the way around the table. It's always interesting to figure out how, when you came up from one side or the other, how you knew where to stop in the middle of the back to let in the next row of people and how to not trip over people as you came in and out. And then they changed it. Yeah. Okay, I'm Lutheran. I hated the change. <laughs> they put the railing straight across the front. It was a much needed change. It was an important change, and the congregation was aging, and there was people who were having difficulties getting up those couple steps, and it was the right, absolutely right thing to do. But it was change. I remember the first table that I celebrated communion at. As an intern, uh, intern uh, during the third year, when you're in seminary, you go off to, to be kind of a student pastor, if you will, place in a church with a supervising pastor. And my supervising pastor came up to me on June 20th and said, okay, I'm taking all of July off. Wait, what? <laughs> yep, you got everything. The whole nine yards, the whole works, everything. What about communion? Yeah, go for it. It's not how we do things in this church. Ah, you're good. Go for it. Okay. Remember Glory Day, Lutheran and Tecumseh, raising that chalice and being nervous as I said the words of institution that first time and not fumbling over it. I remember just this last Sunday being behind the altar at my sanctuary here in Monmouth and trying to see the television that I had to place further back and lots of complicating reasons it was further back than normal and I just got new glasses and I knew prescription and I thought oh sure I don't have to increase the font I'll be able to see it fine but standing back there I was like wait what did I type on that screen <laughs> and clicking through the thing until I got to the the two paragraphs that are the, the words of institution, and I'm like, ah, oh, good, I know these screens by heart. <laughs> because I've been saying those specific words for almost 20 years now as pastor. This space is a space of memory, of remembrance. This is a place where we are told we belong. It's a place where we know we are not forgotten. It's a place where God tells us that we are loved. And even though the church, because of some of its policies uh, or society, thinking they're speaking on God's behalf, may have said things to us that hurt us sometimes, we know we are always welcome at this table. We are included. We are given the fullness of Jesus in this body and in this blood, in this bread and in this cup. But the act of remembrance goes two ways. It is an act of remembrance of God saying, I 
Remember you, I will never forget you. You are my beloved child. You are always a part of my family, and you are never excluded. But it is also an act of us remembering. And we have these words, and they're kind of right here, do this in remembrance of me. And we say that in the words of institution. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my this is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. When we come forward and receive, we are not just remembering, oh, it's a lovely thing Jesus did for us all those years ago. This is not just a spiritual thing. It is a, it is a way of saying, I'm not ever going to forget that I belong here at this table. I'm not going to forget that Christ died on the cross and rose again to include me in God's family. I'm not going to forget. Now the world out there wants us to forget it. The world wants us to be uncertain about our place at the table. The world wants to trick us into thinking we're not worthy, that God has forgotten us. The world wants us to think that there are some who are more worthy or that there are some who are less worthy. There's a powerful story that Katie shared about Heidi being in India and meeting those people who are of that Dalit caste. India is still very divided by this caste system. You do not associate with people who are not on your caste. Unless you're divided. Unless you're Dalit. In which case, no invitation counts. You are completely excluded. Always. Except for the Archive Lutheran Church. Some who were there as Archive Lutheran was forming and voting on that position could not subscribe to that policy of being a castless church. And so they refused to join and left and went and joined a church that allowed the caste system to still be in effect. Arcot said, no, no castes here. Everyone is equal. Everyone is welcome. So when they come forward to that table, they are remembering they belong. Even as their society would tell them, you're not worthy. You don't belong. Our world is not much different over here in the States. We have our own anxieties, our own worries, our own cares. Some of us carry them heavier than others. Some of us uh, it, it consumes us in multiple ways. When we come forward, we're saying, we're not just remembering, we're not forgetting whose we are. We're not forgetting the love that Christ has for us. Our reading from 1 Corinthians tonight is the earliest written, known example of the words of institution that we still have with us uh, today. This letter by Paul to the Corinthians predates the Gospels. It predates Mark's Gospel, which was written in the mid-60s, by at least 20 years. It was late 40s, maybe the very early 50s when this letter would have been written. It tells you how early within the life of the church, passing on the message that at this table, God does not forget us and we will not forget who we are, was to the church and to our story of faith. Because of our blessed protocols for our pandemic, tonight we don't get to come forward to this table. But the word of God's grace is 
no less heard for us in this moment. God remembers all days you. And your act of coming forward is your response, saying, I remember. I am part of this family. I belong at this table because of what Christ has done for me. Amen.
Give us hunger for your word and joy in receiving it. Feed us at all our tables with your blessing. Hear us, holy God. Call upon our name. Blessed are you for this good earth. Cleanse and protect the water you have given for our drinking and our washing. Sustain crops and herds that provide our food. Teach us how to live so that there is enough for all. Hear us, bountiful God. We call upon your name. Blessed are you for our nation. Lead us out of ancient patterns of prejudice. Protect all people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. Establish wise and just leadership in every place and peace where there is violence and war. Hear us, sovereign God. We, we call upon your name. Blessed are you for caring for the needy. Feed the hungry. Give jobs to the unemployed. Embrace all who are isolated and lonely. Comfort those living with guilt and those who mourn. Hear us, merciful God. We call upon your name. Blessed are you for accompanying the sick. Bring an end to this pandemic and restore healthy and hearty connections between persons. Empower medical personnel. Receive our prayers for all we name here before you, especially Betty, Jeanette, Myrna, Dick, Ken, Linda, Carl, Doreen, Jim, Chuck, Robert, Rob, Dan, and Martha. Hear us, faithful God. We call upon your name. Blessed are you for serving us, we who are your servants. Receive now, we pray, our silent petitions. Hear us, loving God. We call upon your name. Blessed are you for generations of the faithful who have proclaimed our Lord's death and lived in service to others. Unite us with them in hope until we join with them at your everlasting banquet. Hear us, eternal God. We, we call upon your name. Hear these and all our prayers, O God, in the name of the one who loves us to the end. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. At this time, I invite you to creatively share God's peace with those around us. If you're not in our midst, I encourage you to send texts, emails, phone calls, however it is to remind us all that we are connected. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, too. We know that our giving is an act of worship, and you all know that at the back of our church is our offering plate that you are encouraged to give whether you enter or as you leave. For those who are not with us in person, we thank you for your generous and continued giving by mailing in your, your offerings. Your giving makes a difference, and we are so grateful for your continued support so this ministry happens. Thank you for your generosity. Together, I know it's not highlighted here, because I forgot to bold it, but together, <laughs> let us say our offering prayer. God of glory, receive these gifts and the offering of our lives. As Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart in the midst of this world, that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life. Through Jesus Christ, 
our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks for the word of God. Holy God, our living water, our faithful companion, our true guide, by your word you created the world with rivers and seas, wells and springs, and in mercy you provided water for your people in the wilderness. For your word, with the water of baptism, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. We praise you, Christ, who joined us in our desert, calling us to righteousness, granting forgiveness, and walking with us into newness of life. For Jesus, your gracious word, we glorify you, O God. We glorify you, O God. Through this holy week, we plead for your spirit, that strengthened by your word, we may care for others and for the world you made, and work for justice and peace for all. For your word in our hearts and minds, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Receive our thanksgiving and grant us your blessing, holy God, now and forever. Amen. Together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. O Lord, my God, my Savior, by day and night I cry to you. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Incline your ear to my lamentation. For I am full of trouble. My life is at the brink of the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I have become like one who has no strength, lost among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the depths of the pit, in dark places and in the abyss. Your anger weighs upon me heavily and all your great, great waves overwhelm me. You have put my friends far from me. You have made me to be abhorred by them. I am in prison and cannot get free. My sight has failed me because of trouble. Lord, I have called upon you daily. I have stretched out my hand to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will those who have died stand up and give you thanks? Will your loving kindness be declared in the grave? Your faithfulness in the land of destruction? Will your wonders be known in the dark? Or your righteousness in the country where all is forgotten. But as for me, O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Lord, why have you rejected me? Why have you hidden your face from me? 
Ever since my youth, I have been wretched and at the point of death. I have borne your terrors and am helpless. Your blazing anger has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They surround me all day long like a flood. They encompass me on every side. My friend and my neighbor you have put away from me. And darkness is my only companion. <laughs>